as I recall, um, the Green New Deal, when I, when I first read it, it didn't seem to, it seemed to, to be wrapped in the rhetoric, rhetoric of environmentalism because of the popularity that, that you referenced. But to me, it, it mm-hmm. didn't seem to have much to do about the environment. It was really, right. um, it was it really just a radical big government agenda where we were going to just um, let the government take over the rest of the private economy, um, right. particularly the infamous uh, um, deleted first draft, right. which was, was banning air travel and all sorts of crazy right. stuff. Right. And, and I mean, to, to your point for, I think there was a, someone did an analysis of this for every one word in the Green New Deal that talks about climate change and the environment. There's eight words that talk about universal health care yeah. and yeah. Uh, food security and racial justice and all that kind of stuff. So I think I tend to be skeptical of people that have like grand conspiratorial approaches to these things. But I think it's it's pretty obvious that it's a Trojan horse for a lot more than just climate policy. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think I think AOC and her her right. wing of the Democratic Party have been quite explicit what mm-hmm. what they want. I mean, she self described democratic socialist, so I don't I don't think even she is trying to to keep that a secret. Um, the The one thing that that I think we struggle with I'm I'm an economist by training and and you know the etymology of the word economy and ecology are are similar, if not identical, mm-hmm. and and I think when we start talking about the environment, we naturally think about resource allocation, and and market innovation, and and all of these these the natural processes, uh, the the natural market process of of coming up with a better, cheaper, more efficient way mm-hmm. to allocate scarce resources. And apparently that's not an attractive way to talk about this stuff um, because you have to convince people that, yes, we care about the environment, we, we live on this planet, we breathe this air, um, these things matter to us. But, but ultimately there's, there's, there's realities about the um, more efficient allocation of scarce resources that lead to better, cheaper, cleaner energy. How do you guys bridge that gap? Right. It's a great question because, and, and you know better than, than anyone with, with the work that you do at Free the People that, and your frustration with how the liberty movement as a whole has uh, managed to alienate so many young people because we talk about facts and, and logic and knowledge and rationality, whereas the reality is that most people can barely maintain an, an attention span for a single tweet, right? And so you have to, you have to hit them with, with a narrative and with an emotion that then allows you to have credibility on an issue to then talk about the solutions. And so that's the way that that we go about it. It's been really fascinating to see how ACC has garnered really significant credibility within the mainstream climate movement. Because when somebody asks me, why do you care about this issue? I don't say it's because I want to own the libs or because I, I care about economic prosperity so much that this is the issue that I care about. It's because I say that I grew up hiking. I grew up, uh, pretend battling orcs with my friends growing up in in the woods uh and i think everyone has that kind of instinctive love of the environment by the way i understand that orcs are a significant source of methane yeah is is that that true yeah so that's why we were battling them yeah (laughs) 